here's an example. We're going to find functional values using the Pythagorean identity. So you are given that the cosine of some arc t is two-fifths, and you're given that the sine of t is less than zero, which, by the way, is a, just a very fancy way of saying that the sine t is negative. Because if it's negative, it's less than zero. And then we want to find the sine of t. So before we just dive into how to do this, let's just recall a minute. Um, here's our circle. All right. So there's some arc t. I'm just going to put it right here, some arc t, right? Arc t. And so when it says that this arc t has a cosine of 2 over 5, this means that this x-coordinate right here, that distance right there, is 2 fifths. That's what that means. So, um, and I just drew it in the first quadrant. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the first quadrant, but uh, it's just nice and easy to look at it there. But that's what this means, that there's some arc t whose x-coordinate is 2 over 5. So let's get rid of some of that stuff there, and let's just refresh our memory a little bit on uh, quadrants of what's positive and what's negative. Okay, so in quadrant one, uh, right here, quadrant one, we know that the cosine is positive, uh, it's the x value, and then we also know in quadrant four that the cosine is also positive. So that means that this arc t is either going to be in quadrant 1 or quadrant 4. But over here, our second piece of information says the sine of t is negative. So that means that it's got to be quadrant 4, because in quadrant 4, we have the signs are negative. So we know that we are going to end up in quadrant 4. Um, but there's some arc coming put that in a different color. Starting here, there's some arc. Yeah, when you go all the way around, ends up right there in quadrant 4. Um, and of course I could make a triangle out of that if I wanted to, like this. Right, so there's that x-coordinate, there's that y-coordinate, and there's my little right triangle. Okay. Alright, so now that we understand where this is coming from and what this means, what we need to do is actually find the sine of t. So let's, let me show you how to go about doing that. So we always start with the Pythagorean identity, which says the cosine of t squared plus the sine of t squared equals 1. And I know the cosine of t, so I'm just going to substitute that in. So 2 fifths, that's my cosine of t, but then I've got to square it, and then I add it to the sine squared of t equals 1. So we're going to do this without the aid of a calculator. So when we square a fraction, you square the numerator and you square the denominator. So 2 squared is 4, 5 squared is 25, plus sine squared of t equals 1. And I'm going to change my 1 into 25 over 25. That's just the same thing as 1, and I'm picking that because my denominator over here is 25. So now I'm going to subtract 4 25ths from each side, so I end up with sine squared t equals 25 25ths, or 25ths, minus 4 25ths. And let's go ahead and do that subtraction. So sine squared of t 25 minus 4 is 21. I have 21 25ths. Now this is squared, and in order to find the sine of t, I have to unsquare it, which means take the square root. And so I take the square root of the left side, simultaneously taking the square root of the right side. And I'm going to continue my work over here. In fact, let me go ahead and erase this circle to make myself just a little bit of room over here. Okay, So on the left side now, because I've square rooted, I have the sine t. And you know when you square root, you have plus or minus solutions. Well, the square root of 21, 21 is not a perfect square, so I'm going to leave that as the square root of 21. We'll talk about that in a second. 
and 25 is a perfect square, so when you square root that, you get 5. Alright, so I've got these plus or minus solutions, but I don't need the plus or minus solution, because recall it told me in the original problem that the sign is less than 0. So I'm going to um, uh, discount one of them. I don't need the positive one, so I'm going to say the sign of t is negative square root of 21 over that is my, whoops, that is my answer right there. Now, we call this an exact value, and it's an exact value because I've left this radical, the square root, of, square root of 21, as a radical. I did not pick up my calculator and make an, a decimal approximation for it. Um, and unless a problem specifically asks you for a decimal approximation, or it specifically says use your calculator, then we're going to not use our calculator and we're going to assume all of these are exact values. So that's the end of the first example.